so good evening good morning good noon whatever is there in your particular country my name is Yabrash Padak first of all uh, what are we are going to do today today's plan is to make a real-time collaborative whiteboard application in which you and your friend could easily write together like in the real time okay so you both will be seeing what you are writing okay so that would that will be super cool so let's try to do it uh, you know uh, okay so uh, <clears throat> Let's open terminal first of all and i'm on the desktop right now so let's create a folder in which our project will be living so let's call it whiteboard uh you know and let's go to this particular folder and let's initialize the node project over here so we'll say npm uh, init which is initialize npm initialize and we'll say control uh, dash y we'll be giving this y flag as because we don't want to answer any questions which, which, which it gives us well we want to stick with whatever the, the, the default thing which has been provided to us so let's do one thing let's install a few packages over here so the first package which we'll be installing is express chairs which is the backbone then the shocket io package which uh, like we'll be using shockets in order to transmit the data in the real time so shocket io uh, what else that's that's it those are the two core packages which we'll be using other than this we'll be using nodemon so that we do not have to restart our server each time we make some change in our javascript file or any other file yeah that's what we want so it will be super cool yeah so once that is done the next the next thing we should to do is uh you know install nodemon so let's uh, install nodemon as a development dependency so that dash capital d is for development dependency it will only be used in development so that's what it means Let's wait until this particular thing is installing. And if you are really thinking, what is this thing? This is a homemade mic with the homemade uh, microphone stand, which I made. Like actually, you know, holding that on this collar in the sound quality does not sound as good as having it really in front of my mouth over here. Yeah. So you can see, you know, we have installed Nodemon. We have installed Shocket IO and Express. So we are good to go. So let's open this particular thing in a Visual Studio code. That's the next thing which we're doing. So let's wait until this thing opens. Yeah. So yeah. So our, our project is open in VS Code. The next thing which we'll be doing is creating a few files, a few files, few folders, which will be which will be required. Okay. Let's let's close this starting page and all. So uh, let's create one particular thing which is called index.js. Now this is where application but let's make a basic express application so the express is equal to require 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 express okay and the next thing let's call it app and let's initialize this thing okay uh, let's call a port and the port which we want to work is if there is a port already specified by the server we want to launch our application on that and this is pretty useful where if you want to deploy your application on heroku or something because you know this gives error if you give uh, like it. yeah so listen uh, we want to listen on this particular port which has been given to us and after this our server starts we want to basically log uh you know we want to log server started on on not on port okay so on port um something like port 8080 uh port whatever port we are on so this will basically log on whatever port we are it will basically show that once that is done we want to do few things first of all you know i have missed one thing you know this is not how you write a socket io server that's little different so you know you just have to create an http server so http server and let's say require and you know http and and just pass the app over there and now you can say over here instead of app dot listen simply write uh what http dot http server dot listen once that is done uh you can actually initialize the socket io thing so you can say require uh socket io uh, you know once the shocket i is there you can uh, basically pass this the http server which you have and you are good to go 
so now there are few more things which we need to do over here first of all uh, we want a public folder in which all our front end that is HTML file and all will be there so let's call it a public folder public folder in which all the HTML file will be there and we, we want to serve it statically so let's call it like uh, uh, app dot use uh, express dot uh, that express dot uh, wait there's something wrong so express we have written the spe spelling of express is wrong so let's call it express now that's okay so now we can say express dot static and we want to make this public folder static so just we have to pass the name of the folder over there so once we have this anything which you put over here let me actually show you if i just you know write index.html and if i create a basic markup let's call it whiteboard app okay and let's give it hello everyone okay so if i just do this and if i start my application to start my application i have to go to the package.json file remove this test script okay and let's add a development script over here so this is the development script which we'll be using in the development so we'll just say nodemon uh, index dot uh, js and in the production environment we will just want to go for node index dot js okay once we have these two things we are good to go so dev script and the production script so let's start the server so first of all let's go to our terminal and uh, you know let's clear it out everything and say npm run that will start the development server in our machine so if we do not have an error okay we have an error so it says require is not a function okay so there's an issue require is not a function so what could be wrong okay yeah 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 i remember there's a function called create server and we have to pass this so this is actually http is not a server so i believe now yeah now our server started without any any of the issues so you can see server started on port 8080 successfully okay uh, so now uh, as our server has started we can open any browser and okay and we can see the web page in our public folder as because we have made it that static so let's wait until our web browser opens yeah so uh, let's call it localhost uh, port we are on port 8080 i believe yeah you can see hello everyone we are serving that html file from that particular uh, you know folder uh, directly from our server that's great so once that is done uh, we want to work actually start working on the html file which we have so let's remove this and let's add only a canvas uh, we'll not be keeping the front end part really really nice looking you can create a very nice looking and you can add all other extra functionalities i'll definitely give you an idea about how you can do it but i'll definitely teach you the core functionality that how to make the real time thing and how to make you know how you can draw on this canvas and all so that i'll definitely cover so let's call it canvas once we have mentioned the id we can go to uh we can go to uh you know we have to create one more thing over here the front end script okay so let's go to this public folder let's create a, a thing called script.js which will uh, you know and we have to include this in our html file so script source the source is this uh, script.js file so once those things are done the next obvious thing which you have to do is uh, you know start start working on on, on our front end so let's first get the canvas uh, okay and like it's document dot get element by id and the id which we have is canvas i believe that's the id which we have right so canvas yeah so you can see canvas and the next thing which we're, we want to do is basically get the context out of that canvas so we'll say canvas dot i think it's get context i don't exactly remember uh is it get context let me actually see uh, unable to connect what happened okay yeah so uh let's let's actually go to a console and see yeah you can see get context is not a function so what can we do 
html canvas uh, canvas element dot dot context uh, let's let's search for this that uh, canvas canvas uh, get context okay so basically you know uh, you have to pass 3d or 2d over there so you know if you go to the mozilla firefox mdn documentation we can have a better idea it's like get context and then you have to pass the dimension so get context and you have to give like 2d i believe that should be fine yeah that's fine and this is like a default error you know we cannot do anything about that we can definitely do we can, you can serve a febicon over there but right now we do not that's not the thing which we are focusing on so once that is done the next thing which, have, which we have to do is set the width and height of canvas canvas has a small width and height i think 132 or something like that as a default but we want to give whatever uh, uh, width and height we have of the window so we'll say inner uh, width and then we can say canvas dot height is wait not that uh, canvas dot height is equals to window dot inner uh, right once we have those two things the canvas will be covering all the screen like like all the space in the screen the next thing is we have to first draw on the screen okay so we have to like we have to learn how to draw then only we can make it real time okay so we just want to call a thing called window dot on mouse move so first of all i just want to give you an idea about how does this thing work okay so if we if i just say context dot uh let's say you know move to this will move to any location which you want okay so if i just want to move to 100 100 so i can say x y just move to like the cursor will move to 100 100 and if i just say context dot line two so this will give a line uh, let's say you know i want i want from 200 200 so if i just say this and then you have to say uh, ctx dot stroke so basically that will give you so which will basically that will give you a stroke so if i just save it and refresh this part of the thing you can see we have a tiny line over there can you see that yeah we have a tiny line over there okay uh that's great so we have a line over there and that's the concept which we're using so we will be drawing this particular thing as our as our mouse moves so first of all it's very very thin first of all you know this height is a bit more so what we'll do is like we'll just uh, multiply it with 0 0.98 which will make it like 0 0.98 percent of like 98 percent of whatever we have so let's refresh this uh okay let's forget this for now so let's move forward so the next thing which would i think you got the got the concept how we are drawing right so this is how we'll draw so let's actually you know call it window dot on mouse on mouse move so whenever we move a mouse it will trigger a this particular function with that particular event so we can get an x and y of the mouse so let's make it a global variable this x and a y because we may need it later on so let's say all it x and the y okay uh let's call it x is equal to e dot client x that will basically you know give you the x position of the uh, of where your cursor is and you i can take a client y for the y position if i just log that thing out you know if i just say x comma y you will see what i what do i mean so if i just go over here refresh this particular thing and just okay what happened invalid arrow function argument parenthesis or oh, there's something wrong in our arrow function let's see okay okay sorry sorry we, I, we just forget to give a equal to over here so now if i could just go uh, over there you can see you know all the x y position of my cursor updated like as soon as i move my mouse over there on the console so once we have the, that let's move this uh, log because we don't want to log it we want to draw it right so what i'll say is um, just uh, ctx we'll say ctx dot line two so we are draw a line to this x comma y 
okay and we want to give this stroke each time this thing is done so wait 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 strok stroke sorry sorry it's context dot stroke ctx dot stroke okay once we have done that i believe we should be able to draw it but there will be one particular issue there you can see you know we are able to draw this but there is one issue we cannot lift it up okay so we cannot uh, like like how will we draw somewhere else without drawing this line that's an issue so let's try to fix that for ticket first so what we'll do is like we'll say let mouse uh, down there's something called mouse down variable we'll be making and let's initially keep it a false okay we the because you know we, we we do not have the mouse down so okay and let's call it window dot on mouse down whenever there's the mouse is like pressed okay uh, and that particular time this particular event will be fired so we'll say mouse down is equal to true okay and whenever mouse is up so you know it, it is released we'll say window dot on mouse down on mouse up on mouse up will be calling this particular function so you know let's put e over there and let's call it mouse down is equal to false you know and we just want to draw this only when the mouse is down so call it mouse down when only when the mouse is down we can just uh, do this save it and that's it that should I believe yeah yeah you can see that actually there's one particular issue you can see if we just start drawing at any other person any other place that that you know a line is drawn so if I just want to draw from here you know, it will draw a line over there that's bad you know we just we just have to fix that the problem is that we are not moving uh, the cursor as we are clicking okay so as the mouse will be down we just want to say that uh, context sorry actually there's one more problem you know just just using tabs we are not rendered using four that will basically give us a better better yes so uh, you know uh, let's do one thing let's call it like uh, ctx dot uh, move to so basically we want to move to the x and y location wherever this thing is there so let's see let's see let's hope that we do not get that same error again yeah that's correct that's correct that's correct you can see i can draw anything now yeah so now the problem is that we just have to make this real time okay that's not a just okay so by the way let's let's try to make it uh, real time so that's how you make let's that's how you draw on a canvas okay so i believe that part is clear we just have to share the xy location of each other okay so the other client to this this particular client this particular client to other client and that's how the thing will work so let's first set it up on the back end part so we have the io right so we'll say io uh, dot on i believe the function is called connect so whenever this connects you'll get one thing which is shock it Socket, you can think of a socket as the connection between you and the other person, the client which has actually connected with you. So let's maintain an array of all the connections. Okay, uh, right now initially we'll have no connections, so that's empty. Whenever someone connects, we'll simply say connections dot push uh, that socket and log uh, what we can say you know every socket has an id let me tell you socket dot id has connected okay save it and then when it tries to disconnect when it try to disconnect this socket dot uh, on when it try to disconnect let's you know whenever this uh, disconnects and by the way you get a reason why it has disconnected over here but we don't need it but let's put it over there so if you have any other project you can definitely use that thing so disconnect when this tries to disconnect what we want to do is we want to remove that thing from the connection so we can say connections is equal to connections dot filter uh, 
let's call it con con dot id is not equal to uh, whatever the socket dot id is so i you know this is like let me explain you if the current socket's id does not like it will i think you are familiar with the filter function right so it 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 includes that particular thing while mapping which results in true we, we should we should return true or false okay so if the id is not equal to that then only it will return true and like it will accept it will uh, like the array will only contain those sockets which are not this socket i'm sounding a little bit confusing but uh, i hope so you got it <laughs> okay i'm sorry if you didn't like <laughs> okay so once that is done uh, we are good to go so uh, we have to connect a front end with the back end now so this uh, socket uh, io client cdn which we have to we, which we, we can use let's try that out socket io client uh, cdn okay there's some net connectivity issue i believe let's try to figure it out So let's continue the video. We were finding the CDN for our uh, for Shocket IO. Will be, I believe this one is really good. So we'll be going with, you know, simply just copy this one, the script tag, and the next thing we'll be doing is we'll be pasting this in our HTML file. And remember, you have to paste it above the script file because we actually are using the script file. We'll be removing all these extra things. Which we don't want right now for now at least okay remove this and that's the script we have and <clears throat> now what you can do is uh you can okay not here actually now what you can do is you can go to your script script file and you can just connect to the back end very very simply so you just have to write var you remember that you have to write var not let not const because it you know it sometimes give error with me i used let and it gave me error so I'll, i would recommend you use var so we'll say var io is equal to io okay and you can write dot connect function and you just have to give the url okay so the endpoint of your backend so that is like http semicolon double slash and localhost and the port is 8080 i believe and now if you save this and go and refresh this particular thing so if we if we do not have any error we do not have that's good we can see that uh, we see our id and you can see it's connected right so that's that's the socket id and it's connected and if i try to disconnect it let me how can i show you together i don't know maybe i can place this the other side okay you can I just uh, try to uh, close this so uh, let's just try to do it again I believe here the disconnecting thing has some issue it's not for 3000 it's for 8080 yeah you can see connected but disconnect has some issue so, so let's try to fix that out so disconnect. okay we are not logging anything so actually this is working so let's try to log out so uh, uh, let's call it shock it um, backslash and then shock it dot uh, id is disconnected yeah let's save it and now now if you see our console we can i believe see the disconnecting and you can see that's disconnected if we try to go to again local host port 8080 that should show connection so that means you know you know our connection between the back end and the front end is successful i don't know what okay so now let's move ahead and let's send the data which is responsible for drawing on the canvas so how will we do that that's actually not very tough i'm sorry for the noise sometimes i cannot control what is going on so let's uh, forget about that let's go let's uh you know send this data as soon as we draw something let's send this x and a y to all the other all the other uh what, what can i say 
all the other members so we can do this something like this so let's say you know this is the socket and uh let's call it socket dot on whenever someone anyone okay tries to draw anything uh he will give some data so that is like the x y position of that particular you know whatever thing is so you know and what we'll do is like we'll broadcast it to all other connection other than this socket so how will we differentiate whether that is the id okay so the id is not it should be any other id than this socket's id which is currently we have so what we can do is like we can say connections dot for each uh, connection okay if the connection dot id is not the current uh, uh, socket's id so which is socket dot id uh, if that is not the case, we simply want to, uh, you know, emit an event, which is what draw. So we like, let's call it on draw. And we'll just pass X and the Y location. Now, what is this X and a Y location? This is the same data which we are receiving from the other person data. Dot X, right, dot y. Uh, why is this giving us errors? Because actually we have to name this. So let's call it X and let's call it y and i hope so that makes sense right so that's how it is and uh, now let's move forward let's move one step forward and test this okay so whenever in the script file whenever we draw something you can see this is the io we have so we can say over here we can say io dot uh, let's say here we are drawing right so let's say io dot emit draw okay and uh, we can send the data x and y right so we can say x comma y i hope so that makes sense right so we are sending this x and y in the back end over here in the data we have x and y and for all the other connection other than the socket which we are mentioning over here we are emitting this x and y as a location so how will we receive this x and y x and y so that's simple so you will say io dot on on and what event do we have we emitted in the back end it's on draw so that's what we'll be referencing over here so on draw and we'll say uh, what 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 will we receive here we'll be receiving x comma y i believe we have destructured that so in order to like we can use it easily so what we can do is like we can wrap this inside a parenthesis so that it's easier to handle now we have x and a y we can have like we can draw it okay so how will we draw it first of all you know let's call this same event which we have done over here and let's see now what happens so let's save it and let's try to do it first of all you know this is this is good this is happening and let's open one more instance of the same thing and let's see whether this thing is happening or not so if i just say this oh it works man it works there's one single issue let me let me actually show you yeah you can see this works as we want so there's one single small issue which i just want to address right now so if i just you know draw over here you can see that draws but if i go to the, some other location that that you know you can see that that happens you know it it jumps to that location so what is the solution the solution if, if, is that if any person if any person's uh, mouse becomes down move the cursor to that particular location not only mine anybody's okay so uh let's do that let's try to do that so what we can do is like on mouse down we have uh let's let's make an event for this particular thing so let's call it shocket dot on uh let's say mouse uh, down or let's say you know down let's go let be simple let's keep it simple so here we'll receive the data which is actually sent and here we can say connections dot uh, emit uh, no sorry for each so we just won't want to send ourselves because we are already moving okay so you can see in the script whenever our mouse zero is down we are we are already moving so we do not need to move all other person's mouse should be moved so we can say uh, connection and we can say uh, if same thing connection uh, sorry connection dot id is not equals to uh, socket 
dot id uh, we can say connection dot emit and let's call it on down this this particular event and now actually we don't want to send any data over here but okay we want to send any data the x and a y location right we want to send the data so it's a data it's the same thing man data dot x and y as data dot y you can see all these do these two functions are almost identical right yeah that happens so let's let's uh, you know fire up this down event and let's see what happens so if we just go to on mouse down we can now over here we have moved r x and y now we have to move all other persons x and y so we what we can do is we can fire this up we can say io dot uh, emit draw oh sorry down <laughs> i forget the name always uh then let's mention the x and y over here so let's say x comma y and over here we can say io dot uh, on uh, down on down it was like i think on down on down yeah uh, we can say this is uh, x comma y it's pretty uh, same as before but the function is different okay so you have to write context ctx dot move to uh, and uh, we can mention the x and y location over here and that will pretty much i think work if it will not work we'll try to fix it so where's the other one over here okay that was the other one this is the first one let's try to refresh so that we have a clear clear canvas so we can say you see you know we are in real time you know your friend and you can draw on a single canvas and it will work like this you know up so you you learn something right so if you want the source code of this particular application you'll you can find it in the description below so thank you have a great day this was it and one more thing you know as i have told i'll be discussing some new technologies which you can use to make this application even better and if you'll comment down below i'll definitely create a video on that so you know that is a technology called web rtc data web rtc first of all let's know about this particular thing web rtc web rtc is a technology which is developed by google in order for peer-to-peer -peer real time data transmission so what you can do is instead of passing the data through a server like if let's say you know right now what we have the system which we have if the number of user increases this may like this may not be the best solution because it will it will have a lot of traffic going on through the server so the op the best option would be to transfer the data directly from one computer to another computer of the client only so in that particular purpose web rtc would be a very very good option you can you know there's something called web rtc data channels okay so if you go to gu uh, guides and if you go to data channels you can have a look in this particular thing and you can transmit this xy location using data data channels and i would like you to try and definitely i'll make a video on web rtc data channel in the future for sure but uh, for now you can just give it a try to make this application using web rtc data channel simply mention your code and code in the description i'll definitely show your code on my video you know that would be amazing and thank you guys for watching this video i hope so you learned something you know you know just let's 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 uh, see our application once more you know you can see you know everything we can we can you know in live like like let's say you know let's 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 take a use case like if if the teacher is explaining like this is hydrogen and this is carbon this is some more hydrogen i'm just passing on time i don't know why okay so this is some other hydrogen so the student could simply you know let's say this is teacher so student could ask why this is here or anything else so he can also draw and it is a real-time collaboration. So thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.